Hello, sunshines, and welcome to Devalian Plays Witchwood by Alien Trap. You're the old witch of the woods, and it's up to you to craft spells and potions, and sometimes judgments, for the people you meet on your adventure. If you want to see more games from this channel, drop a like and a follow, and tell me in the comments what you want to see me play next. Warning, this video contains strong language. Discretion is advised. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Why don't I just get me, like, honey from the dude? Why do I have to go all the way to the apiary fields? Stick! Stick! This is an obnoxiously roundabout way. What am I stuck on? A tree? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Love that. Stick! Mm. Well, oh, it's ruined, apparently. Alright, the apiary was over here. Maybe? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Stay away from me, Tarkis. I want nothing to do with you. Yes. To the apiary. Mm -hmm. Heidi home, I'm afraid we're closed for the season. Closed, but I need some of your honey right away. Sorry, our supply was cleaned out just a little while ago. Funny little man with a cart, you just missed him. Yes, I've met him. He's the quartermaster for the bear, but he had a bit of an accident on the road. I need to collect some more honey for the lakeshore camp. The bear? Well, that explains why that quartermaster purchased so dang much. I heard that the lumbering bully would steal the nectar from a larva if he could suit him. If it suit him, my poor bees have already worked themselves half to death for that order, and they don't have any honey left. I wish I could do something to help you, but the only honey left is in the entire apiary is Her Majesty Personal Reserve. Her Majesty? Why, my sweet spring flower, the jewel of my crown, the golden sun of my... Yes, yes, get on with it. My beloved queen, she's as lovely as she is wise and resides over her flowered kingdom. A shrill voice pierces the meadow and sends chills down your spine. Slave, where is my dinner? I order you to bring me the finest sunflowers. Right away, my love. And make it pretty this time. I do, don't want another one of your dandelion bouquets like that common wasp. Yeah, yes, my sweet. Hmm, I think I had better have an audience with the queen myself. Don't mind if I do. Are you it? Nope, 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 no, nope, 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 nope. Uh, what are... Cool. There you are. The regal insect looks down on her curled nose at you scornfully. That foul beekeeper is supposed to stop the rabble from trampling my delicate garden. Good help, sir. So hard to find, isn't it? And I suppose you've come to lend a hand. No, I don't think so. What do you want, little beetle? You seem to be a very busy woman, so I won't waste your time. I need honey, your best honey. She tilts her long neck back and lets out a buzzing laugh. <laughs> don't you think I simply give my carefully cultivated riches to any commoner? Do you have any idea how much time and energy I spend managing this colony? Everyone always wants something, but no one ever wants to work for it. <laughs> In a rustle of petals, the beekeeper comes running over, holding on an assortment of beautiful prairie flowers. My darling sweetheart, I offer you the finest meadow flowers. I hope you find these to your liking. Is this... Is this marigold? You wax rain fruit! Fool! You know I despise this stuff! How many times do I say I repeat myself? Get out of my sight, all of you! My love, I have wronged you. Now let me try again. You follow the bee beekeeper a short distance away while he busies himself picking more flowers. She seems to be in a foul mood. Does she always treat you like this? Well, yes, but it's really usually my own fault. Sometimes she just really gets her venom up. A, a little bit of smoke and soothing. Herbs calm her right down. Smoke, you say? I'm sure I could come up with something to even out her mood. Ooh, royal intense incense recipe. 
Da, 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 da. So, what else do I need? Uh, do I have the stuff to make? No. Uh, I do have the stuff to make that. Let's see if I can find, um, if they have a spring here. Mm -hmm. Or one of those water pumps. Mm -hmm. I know there's one around here somewhere. I just don't know exactly where. Stay away from your fucking turkeys. Stupid ass birds. I believe there is a pump. I know. Okay, somewhere. Yeah, here it is. Now. I need, need those so often. Now, what do I need? Nothing. Why don't you have a water pump on your apiary, sir? These little chicken legs can only take me so far. fans herself lightly as the world begins to push and pull all around her. Oh, does anyone else feel a little hot? Anyway, as I was saying, you can't just, just... The sparkling sun bears down on the queen like a warm summer's embrace. Hi, oh, yeah, look at all the beautiful colors. Have they always been so bright? The queen bee stretches her arms across the sea of flowers and brushing the tips of their petals gleefully. She arches her limbs through the myriad of colors swirling about her head. It's gorgeous. Oh, and oh, what a delicious smell. Cracking into the waxen walls of her hive, the queen pulls out a golden honeycomb. She proceeds to messily stuff the honey into her face. Mmm, delectable. Oh, it's so good. You simply have to try some, my dear. I never tasted anything so delicious in my life. She offers up a sticky handful to you. Why, thank you, my queen. Mine. All right, correct. The talisman. Talisman. I need... Oh, I have everything. Oh, I need the wicked... The, for the wicked gem. So where's the talisman? This one. Uh, oh, and I need one of these. <gasps> No, I need new juice. That's right. Well, I, there's a cow around here somewhere, so let me go get that new juice. There's a very upset puppies in this house. Do we know how to do anything with him? No. I guess eventually we'll have to figure that out. Chickens! <laughs> Gonna steal your eggs for no reason. Somebody's at my door and wants to talk to me. Alright. There goes all of my stuff. Alright. Uh, magic paste. Now what? What? Uh, oh, I'm missing another one of these. Excellent. Now I can craft it. Okay. Let's make haste! Mm -hmm. 
Mm, this might be the fastest we've ever taken something out. <laughs> Ooh, I'm probably gonna need to start getting these. What hit me? I don't remember. Whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Frantic! Alright, give this to the man. Probably will kill you. This will block the next thing trying to attack me. Oh, I have to give it to him. Okay, protective talisman. Here, this ought to shield you from harm, for a time. He grins nervously as he puts the charm around his neck, then he clobbers himself in the face with his own fist. What? Wow, you weren't kidding! <laughs> Though that's nowhere near the kind of punishment the bear can dish out. I better find some more stuff to test it out with. Then I'll give the bear a piece of my mind. He stumbles off into the camp to find other objects to try against his newfound protection, leaving the bear's tent unattended. Okay, bye! Give me. This and this and this. Anything else in here? Nope. Mm. All right, honey. Oh, frothing basin. Forgot. Keep forgetting to read stuff. You ladle out a good portion of the writhing tar-like substance into the brewery. To be safe, you add a little bit more, just for texture. Torn teddy bear. You pause before dropping the tattered plaything into the brewery. A glint on it in its button eyes reminds you of something, but that, but the thought soon evaporates from your mind. You overturn your palm and the stuffed bear splashes down into, into the concoction. It floats sadly for a moment before becoming waterlogged and disappearing under the surface. With the addition of the final ingredient, the brewing equipment is sealed and set to work. Steam hisses from rivets and its swollen metal belly clinks and rattles. Before long, the waggling fingers of the gauges and dials settle down, indicating that the brew is complete. You give a quick sniff test and recoil at the sickeningly sweet vapors. You push an empty wooden keg under the contraption spigot and crank the release valve. The brewery strains under the pressure and fills the keg with chunky, oozing fluid. May not be the finest honey meat around, but hopefully that great raging galoot won't stop to notice the difference. Take the keg. <laughs> ah, Captain, I brought you uh, more honey mead. The bear swipes up the tankard with his massive paw and tosses the contents into a slivering maw without hesitation. He licks its chops, savoring the peculiar flavor. With a sudden jerk, he bears down on you with suspicion. Say, this tastes kind of funny. What did you do, soldier? It's a, a new recipe. I thought you might enjoy something with a little more sting in it. Ah, you know I hate new things. I'll teach you to mess with my favorite brew, you hayseed. The bear is upon you with frightening speed. He races the huge mace in his paw, skyward, and you brace for the impact. With an equal measure of speed, the sergeant leaps between the crashing mace and your head. You peer through your fingers as a great clang resounds throughout the camp. The bear roars furiously as his blow is magically repelled off the sergeant's talisman. The mace goes spinning out of his paw and falls into the lake with a great splash. He gapes, dumbfounded, as the sergeant stands before him completely unharmed. Ah, uh, that'll teach you to pick up on us, you big oaf. This has uh, been a long time coming. The sergeant wags his finger at the bear. Who do you think you are, huh? You think you're so big tough with your fancy feather hat and a big honking club? Well, look at you now. 
camp soldiers gathered to witness in stunned awe. Miraculously, the bear seems to shrink in the face of the sergeant's onslaught. If it was up to me, you'd be dishonorably discharged for disorderly conduct. You're a disgrace to the uniform. You're no captain of mine. With fear welling up in his eyes, the bear shrinks and shrinks until he's reduced to the size of a small cat. And another thing, I... Uh, what's happening? In the place of the bear's drunken grimace is a stitched smile of a doll's grin. Two button eyes stare back at the disapproving faces surrounding the little plush toy. The sergeant takes a step back to reveal a small shape of a stuffed teddy bear where the brute once stood. Your transformative potion has finally done its work. Gee, I guess I overdid it. He scratches his head in befuddlement but seems genuinely relieved. Hey Sarge, I uh, guess that means you're in charge now, right? Uh, yeah, I guess it does. Well, what are you all standing around for? The camp's a mess! Let's get to work! Hello. You pick up the diminutive doll and brush some sand out of its fur. As you inspect it further, its head lulls to face you. Far within the glassy surface of its button eyes, you can barely make out the tiny crimson flame, the trapped soul of the bear. This ought to be what the old goat is after. I hope he's happy. All right, one left. Oh, hey. What a relief with the bag gone. We can all rest easy. Cowards. A little old lady's doing all your work for you. Let's see what we have to do to get the ox taken care of. Because I think that's all for this first part. I'm pretty sure that would be the first act. Because uh, if we do... If we follow the three act structure... Um, then it would definitely be... Um, the first four, it would be four per act. So this one just doesn't have one. You. <laughs> this is so brutal. Probably definitely need to do some grindage. Probably after the first act. How's that? Look? Do some off camera grindage. It's like, I really just want to play this game. Like, every time I sleep. But no, I have to record it. And it's like, I just don't feel like recording. I just want to play. But I think, like, between acts should be a good time for me to do grinding stuff. Not think of witty things to say. Not read shit. <laughs> Is the card still down there? I have so many of those nuts. Yep, the card's still there. I still can't get anything from it.
All right, all right, what was the last thing? So last one is the ox, right? Speak to the scarecrow at the ox's farm. Okay. Gotta do something about these gnomes. Not entirely sure what they're about. Puppies. <laughs> All right. So, hey, scarecrow buddy. The airy sim simulacrum, simulacrum of human sways in the breeze. His lumpy face seems to leer down at you, as if expecting something. Ah, uh, abracad corn cob. The figure creaks against its pole, as its vegetative head twists to look at you. It takes a wheezing breath, expelling a moth from its mouth hole. Hello? Yes? Have you come to strike a deal with the great and magnanimous Harvest Master? Uh, no, thank you. I'm involved in quite too many dark contracts with the supernatural beings already. Why then have you summoned me? Has the ox made a deal with you, perchance? The ox? Why, yes. Terrible trade, I say, but a deal is a deal. What sort of trade? Does it have a. Does it have a deal with the family? Yes, he said he wanted to win pr pretty prizes, grow the best crops, said he would give up anything in the world. So he offered me his wife and son, and I'm not one to refuse a bargain like that. Where are they? What did you do with them? Don't worry, they're fine, but as long as I make the crops grow, they belong to me. And if the crop should fail, your deal will be broken? Ha! <laughs> I am the great harvest master. My harvest will never fail. We'll see about that. I better take a closer look at these prize winning plants. Give me. Clump, 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 clump. Okay. Uh. Healthy. Ooh, a withering can. Hmm. These stalks don't look so sturdy to me. A good herbicide ought to shrivel these right up. That'll teach the ox a lesson about proper ag agricultural practices. I'll need a sturdy enough vessel to hold the poison, though. Maybe I can convince the vegetal fella to give up that nice big watering can of his. God, I love the music. It's just so freaking chill. Juxtaposed against everything that is happening in this place. Oh, I found a new button that works on that shit. Hey, give me your watering can. Nope, you're the wrong one. Uh, who is the one that is not the wrong one? Uh, I think it's this guy. Maybe, potentially, hopefully... Yes. We are hello again. Find out anything about what the tox is up to. As a matter of fact, I have. It seems he traded his family for a turnip to a turnip wizard or a field genie or some other such nonsense. Ah, you must uh, mean the harvest master. That explains a lot, actually. Bad business to get up mixed up with that sort of fellow. The farmer nervously wipes his brow with the back of his leafy hand. Uh, not that I would know anything about that myself. Listen, I don't have time to exchange farm gossip. I need to borrow your watering can over there. Uh, I'd be happy to lend it to you, but unfortunately I still need it to grow my prize vinin vegetables. You glance at the down at the fat head of cabbage, bobbing gently against the blanket of big, swaddling leaves. You think you may have heard of a faint giggle coming from deep within the fronds. Seems plenty big enough to me. Ugh, just to fit. My little baby is going to grow up to be a great big baby. 
is going to be the build of the ball at the year's festival. Festival. But if it were to say grow a little bit fat, but if it were to say grow a little bit faster, I suppose I wouldn't need my watering can at all. You swear the farmer winks at you despite not being equipped with any eyes. Ah, does nobody ever grow produce in the honest way? Let me take a look at the little tyke. You look down at the fattest little cabbage you've ever seen, but if it gets your but if you get if it gets your hands on the watering can, it should stand to be a little fatter. Okay, I have a turkey gizzard stone. I need a growth potion. Crushed into fine powder, a gizzard stone lends potent nutrients to the soil. Okay, uh, two jars of water and a growth potion. I only have one jar of water. Come here, little brigit. Oh, asshole. Alright, oh, give me some clue. <laughs> oh, there's some clay. Alright, how much do I have enough for a clay pot? Yes, I do. Okay, and I need water. <laughs> oh. This is a mistake. No, it wasn't. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, these guys. They know me. We're cool. There it is. Okay. So, to make a growth potion... Really? At least I have enough of that. And... Ooh! I have enough of that. And what else do you need? Sweet. I should have plenty. Oh my god, you're back quick. Okay. Growth potion. You pop up in the cork of the potion and sprinkle the bright liquid into the cabbage's roots. You look down at the fattest little cabbage you've ever seen, but if it gets your hands in the watering can, ba 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 ba, and then two jars of water, you spritz the cabbage with fresh water, fresh clear water, while uttering a simple horticulture charm. Horticultural charm. Jesus. The water beads like dew drops before the leaves drink them up and brighten in color. The budding plant changes into a bright purple, then blue, then yellow. It suddenly goes rigid and shrinks to the size of a marble. The farmer gasps in horror as his precious baby disappears back into the earth. He turns to you, shoulders stiff and pitchfork in hand. He takes one step in your direction but stops abruptly when a tremor shakes the ground. You look to your feet and watch deep cracks split the earth. Hold on to your hat. This one's gonna be a big one. You hear a booming giggle echo from the deep in the ground. The vegetal farmer falls to his knees, clutching his hat to his chest. In an explosion of leafy greens and flying earth, the bouncing head of an enormous cabbage erupts into the field. The farmer reaches out to it shakily. My, my little baby. Papa. The farmer scrambles towards the big, bumbling cabbage with open arms. My beautiful baby, look at how you've grown. I don't know how to do a German accent. <clears throat> See, with a little love and help from your friends, you're sure to win first prize after all. Oh, I don't even care about the silly zing anymore. Just look how handsome my baby is. The two embrace, laughing and crying. I guess you won't be needing that watering can anymore. Please, help yourself. You've helped me more than enough. Okay, that's fine now. It will take some work to break through the scarecrow's magical boon, but you're confident in your ma mastery of poisons. 
So I need, oh, okay. You can have that. You crush up the impish bone into fine powder. The potent fertilizer will help spread the blight. It will So I also need a potion of blight and word water. Weird water. Okay. Potion of blight. Uh, ooh, cool. And weird water. Weird water. Weird water, weird water. How do I make weird water? Which one is weird water? Uh, of course I need fucking water. And I also need pots. I need to go get some clay. Oh, back to the well, I guess. Thank you for joining me as I played Witchwood by Alien Trap. The next episode will be out shortly. If you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like, a follow, and ring that notification bell so you know when a new episode drops. Also, don't forget to check out the link to the completely free Discord server to chat about games and whatever else is on your mind. Let's keep the comments chill so no hate or spoilers, as I'm not above removing those comments of the people who make them. That's all for now, folks, and I'll see you next time.